Discussions surrounding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's problematic launch continue to circulate. Again, there's a general agreement that this is probably the best Pokemon has been in terms of gameplay and game design and the evolution of the formula, but it's at its worst when it comes to performance, technical state, bugs and glitches, you name it. There's simply too many issues with this game for me to recap, so all I'll say is that there are three previous videos that are worth checking out. There is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Mass Ridicule due to rough graphics, poor performance, and disruptive bugs, which comes with a slew of sources that will take you to all the different clips of people highlighting both hilarious and extremely disruptive bugs. Here is a second video worth checking out, Pokemon Ridiculed even more, Scarlet and Violet bugs go viral, fans get Nintendo to issue re fund. You've got plenty of more links here to further entertain you with uh, imagery like this. And then last but not least, I talked about some game-breaking bugs that straight up essentially disable certain modes. There are things like the Terra rates, which are currently busted, as well as the Battle Stadium PvP, which currently has an issue where it's apparently using the same RNG seed for every battle. So that means that, say, low probability moves that are high risk, high reward, you can predict exactly when they'll miss and when they'll hit, essentially making PvP a broken and busted and rigged affair. The bugs and glitches surrounding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet definitely go beyond hilarious visual mishaps. Performance alone can have a negative impact on gameplay, but when there are bugs like this where various multiplayer elements are rendered completely moot, I mean, it just further highlights that this is a game that was rushed launch and that it needed, you know, a couple more months, if not a year or more in the oven. Now, as of the recording of this video, it's been about two weeks since the launch of Scarlet and Violet, and Nintendo has been, well, very characteristically quiet. They just haven't been communicating a whole lot about what future plans are to fix these issues, and Nintendo tends to be among the least communicative game publishers and companies. They tend to not really interact with the community as much as they should, but it seems as though the backlash surrounding Scarlet and Violet has been severe enough, has been widespread enough, that Nintendo did ultimately decide to say something about it. They did issue a response, it is kind of buried, though. They didn't really put it out on social media or anything. They just kind of put out a statement on their customer support page that I don't think a whole lot of people are going to visit. Right here, they kind of instruct you on how to update Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. And scrolling further down, you'll find a patch note for version 1.1.0, which came out today on December 1st, 2022. This is the closest we've gotten to a statement from Nintendo about the rather embarrassing launch of Scarlet and Violet. Now, the patch notes themselves are pretty piss poor. They detail how Season 1 of Ranked Battles will kick off, allowing you to enjoy Ranked Battles through the Battle Stadium. Please check the in-game notice for more details about Ranked Battles Season 1. I'm curious as to whether version 1.1.0 actually fixes the RNG issue, the fact that Battle Stadium apparently uses the same seed. If that hasn't been fixed by the time Ranked Battles has started, by the time Season 1 has kicked into full gear, then there'd be no point to Ranked Battles. It wouldn't be about players on even ground fighting with each other using the strategies that the game design encourages. It'd be more about who better exploits the not-random RNG that's predictable. The analogy that I used in my last video was essentially a deck of cards that you shuffle once, and whatever sequence of cards you get there, that's the same sequence you use for every, you know, poker match or whatever. At that point, you can start learning the sequence of cards. You can start memorizing how things will play out and essentially rig matches that way. It would be about that rather than about actually, you know, playing the game. And I'd love to tell you that this problem has been fixed, but the patch notes here are rather piss poor and don't specify. They do highlight that they fix an issue where the music would not play correctly during the battles with the Elite Four and the top champion in the Victory Road path. But that aside, the only additional patch note we get is that other select bug fixes have been made. Just the complete lack of specificity that is incredibly frustrating given how dire some of these technical issues are and how urgently these fixes need to be doled out. Now in the last paragraph of this patch note, there is an acknowledgement that Nintendo has been receiving feedback, that they're aware of just how many technical issues players have encountered. They don't really go into a whole lot of detail as to how they'll make it up to players and 
what their roadmap is for fixing all this stuff. All they say here is that we are aware that players may encounter issues that affect the game's performance. May? It is a certainty that you'll encounter some kind of bug or glitch or that you will see frame rate stutters. Everyone's going to have different tolerance levels. Some people are able to power through the performance issues that plague this game alongside the bugs and glitches, both the hilarious ones and the disruptive ones, while others, you know, really want a smooth experience from beginning to end and just prefer to wait until the game feels like how it should have felt at launch. But regardless of what tolerance levels are like, May is a rather misleading word to use. You will likely, very likely, encounter issues with the game's performance the more you play it. Our goal is always to give players a positive experience with our games, and we apologize for the inconvenience. So there is an apology in this statement, but surely Nintendo and the decision makers knew that when they decided they're going to launch the game, that it was going to be in a rough technical state. It wasn't like an accident that they couldn't predict. They knew exactly what they were doing when they rushed this game to launch, and saying sorry about not a mistake, but rather an intentional bad decision, knowing that this was going to be a bad decision, and deciding that it was more important to make the money now and fix the game later... You know, it just, the apology rings hollow. Finally, we take the feedback from players seriously and are working on improvements to the game. So they are acknowledging that they've been paying attention to what players have been saying, which is good. And it's nice to know, I guess, that they are working to improve the game. But we really don't have much of a timetable. We don't know if it's going to be weeks or months. I get the sense that Scarlet and Violet's issues aren't going to be a simple fix. It feels like the foundation itself is very rocky when it comes to the, I don't know, the engine and just the technical side of things. I get the sense that, yeah, it's going to be months before the game feels like how it should have been at launch. And Nintendo slash Game Freak, if you really do take players' feedback seriously, then ensure that something like this doesn't happen again. Give the development team more time, overhaul elements of Game Freak that need to be overhauled, because clearly the current development schedule and pipeline are just not jiving with how much more ambitious each new Pokemon entry is getting, especially with these latest releases, which really expand sort of the open world aspect. I mean, there's a lot more going on in this new Pokemon entry, and the expansion of the formula is greatly appreciated, but in this case, it felt like Game Freak just couldn't keep up with the ambitions surrounding the evolutions that they made to the Pokemon formula. If you really care about players' feedback, then, I mean, it should go without saying that you shouldn't have rushed this game to launch. Players' feedback surrounding every rushed game release has been, you shouldn't have done this. It shouldn't be after the fact that you have to start taking players' feedback seriously. We're not talking about, say, like a new game design decision that you can't know for sure whether it's going to land with players or not until they get their hands on it. We're talking about what is very clearly a very unpolished game that any person just spending a couple hours of the game would be able to tell you, oh, this is clearly not ready for launch. Nintendo, you decided to publish this game anyway. The decision makers decided, let's just put this out there anyway, because it's what keeps investors happy. Shame that what could have been a home run, as I've said before, what could have been like a 9 out of 10 game easily ended up being like a 7 out of 10 game. Hopefully lessons were learned here, and the next time around, we can get a game that not only highlights that Game Freak as a team is catching up to their ambitions and that they have the skill set necessary to execute on where Pokemon is headed, but also shows that there is consideration for the customers and the fact that they are paying money for a product that works with a certain quality standard at launch, not months after launch. But unfortunately, companies do be companies. Corporations do be corporations. And Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, despite its technical woes, performed so incredibly well sales-wise. It's the best performance in the series. It's the best launch in Nintendo history, basically, and the best console-exclusive launch of all time. So from a financial standpoint, there's not a whole lot of incentive for them to actually, um, you know change their ways even when they push out a flawed game like this they're still gonna make bank because pokemon is such a huge franchise it's like too big to fail but hopefully nintendo and game freak don't let that get to their heads in the long term and do take some pride in their work and uh actually strive for a game that can score a 9 to 10 out of 10 
uh, with some great concepts here that just uh, need more time in the oven and need the care to elevate this evolved Pokemon formula to its full potential. And there's plenty of potential there. I suppose only time will tell how all this will play out, but until then, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Nintendo's brief and vague comment, and what your experience has been like playing Scarlet and or Violet. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah! I'll see you guys next time. Young out!